You just built yourself a custom creation hot rod and you couldn't be prouder of yourself. But you want to finish the job right and get it titled and registered. Do you know what's involved in the process? I'm Kanan from Dirt Legal and today I'll take you to the steps to get your kit car titled and registered properly. Home built vehicles sometimes called custom construction or kit cars can be registered through your DMV just the same as any normal car and truck. Every state is going to require a few standard items in order to register your custom homemade vehicle. Now that's going to include an appropriate application for forms for title and registration, special vehicle safety inspection, and potentially emissions testing certificate if available in your area. The home built vehicles do need certain parts to be legal to drive on the road. They often need to be inspected by a state body rather than a local inspection shop to approve that they are actually safe to be on the road legally. Now specific items should be listed on your state's DMV website, but typically they're going to include a horn. Now every vehicle should have an audible horn and it should be able to be heard from a few hundred feet away. It typically can play any sound that you want as long as the minimum volume threshold needs to be. But just remember they can also be too loud, so leave your train horns at home. It's going to need a windshield. Now that's going to keep debris out of your eyes. Now most states don't allow for front windshields to be tinted, though it may not be required to be made from traditional class or cover you in the traditional sense. Now your state might also require that you have a hood on the vehicle. There could be also additional regulations on the air intakes or the hood scoops as well. Sometimes these intakes or hood scoops can't be four inches taller than the regular surface of the hood just to ensure visibility from the driver's seat. Now the method of securing the hood might come into question as well, such as belts, straps, pins, or the regular old hinges might be required. Now concerning mirrors, most states require that homemade vehicles have a minimum of two mirrors, but the securement method and the shape of them often isn't restricted. Now typically the two are required, the inside rear view mirror and the driver's mirror, and often the passenger side mirror may be optional. Now with windshield wipers, you don't want to be in the rain or snow or foggy conditions without them. And the state probably doesn't want that either. So you may have to put windshield wipers on, but check your local regulations of what is required. Next, something that should seem obvious, but it's an actual steering wheel. Of course, if you want to drive the car, having a steering wheel makes complete sense. Some laws limit the type of steering wheel that you can actually use though. For example, you might not be able to use a fighter jet joystick or a butterfly shaped wheel. Instead, it's likely you're required to have a circular wheel that measures at least 13 inches in diameter. And some states may not allow it to have a quick release detach either. Now concerning seat belts, you're probably not getting around this requirement no matter what. Now the, the attachment points may depend on the style of the vehicle and the year models. So check your local regulations because they can be a sticky area to navigate. Now another thing is going to be brakes. Obviously you want the vehicle to be able to stop, but having a parking brake may be optional. So again, check to make sure how many brakes are needed and what type are needed for your vehicle. Now fenders and tires should be one that is easy to think about because driving a car without actually having wheels on it, that just seems weird. But the attachment point of the wheels may be restricted depending on the state. You also may have to have mud flaps or fenders covering the wheels and tires depending on what type of vehicle it is. Again, it's always easy to just check the regulations just to make sure you have everything covered. But always remember your tire should be DOT approved regardless of the situation of fastening or fenders and mud flaps. Another item that's going to be on the list is mufflers. Now, of course, I love hearing the sound of open headers as much as anybody else, but mufflers and catalytic converters do have a place on the road. They do offer pollution reduction and noise reduction. So check if they are required, how many, and their placement to stay street legal. Now, most states are going to require that you have a rear license plate at minimum. It's probably going to need two bulbs in case one goes out and just note that your state may have a requirement on the color that can be illuminating your license plate. Some states also require a front plate so if you're unlucky like me you have a front plate and a rear plate and just make sure that they're at the proper height off the ground and they are illuminated without obstructions. Now all street legal home built vehicles are going to need reflectors on the side and the rear. The color, position, and the number is going to vary by state. So again, check what is required locally. Now in addition to reflectors, you're going to need lights, headlights, 
tail lights, turn signals. They must be DOT approved in DOT housings and the bulbs themselves must be DOT approved also. The color may be restricted and the number may be restricted. So again, check all those requirements to make sure that you're gonna stay legal with all of your lighting. And the last thing that's gonna be on there is ground clearance and bumper clearance or bumper height. I know having a lowered vehicle looks fantastic. Driving something too low with too little ground clearance because of wheel size or a lowering kit may be illegal. On the flip side of that, it may also be illegal to have a vehicle too tall. You also have to worry about clearance to bridges and any low overhanging clearance issues. So check your local regulations to make sure that your vehicle is appropriately high or appropriately low to make sure you're street legal. Now oftentimes custom built cars require a different smog check than a standard vehicle would. Make sure you consult the rules and regulations in your city, county, or state to be sure you are complying with all of those. Now if you don't have insurance yet, you can usually transport your kit car to the inspection facility on a trailer. Now keep in mind that the road use will require active insurance. Insurance usually requires an active VIN number, so plan your steps accordingly. Now finding insurance shouldn't be that big of a problem through an established insurance company, but again, search around to see who's gonna work with homemade vehicles. Now beyond these things we've talked about, some states will require a brake and light adjustment certificate, extended emissions testing, and other paperwork in addition to these items. The DMV often requires extra details when registering a kit car or a homemade vehicle, and those can include detailed photographs and receipts of the vehicle's components, a statement of construction or an equivalent parts list, and a valid VIN number or a manufacturer's certificate of origin, otherwise abbreviated as an MCO. Now, in addition to a state-sanctioned safety inspection, the DMV will usually require receipts and photographs from all major components used in the kit car's construction. Now, you want to have bill of sale, junkyard receipts, invoices, manufacturer certificates on any of the major parts you used in building the vehicle to prove that it's actually roadworthy. Now, be sure to keep all your receipts organized as you build the car. I know it can take years to put these things together, but keep everything together organized. A statement of construction is a document that provides detailed information on the parts and methods used in the vehicle's constructions. Now, though your state may not call it by that exact name, registering a home-built car, you'll probably be asked to prove that you used roadworthy and safe parts to ensure the safety of yourself and others. Now, this could also come in the form of receipts, and manufacturer descriptions of those critical components. If you're titling a purely home-built vehicle or one where the frame and body don't have a VIN number yet, the state will issue you a state-assigned VIN after the car passes the inspection. Now, there are services you can look into that will get you a new VIN number using the state's legal process. Now, if you're titling a manufactured kit car from a company like Superformance or Factory 5 Racing, the vendor is probably gonna provide you a manufacturer's certificate of origin or the MCO that the DMV can use the registration. Now going through all this, one thing to remember that this guide does apply to home-built trailers as well. Should those be titled and registered in your local area? Well, that's again, something you'll have to check out. It's gonna all depend on what state you live in and most states will require you to title your trailer if it weighs over a certain amount. Other states may just require no title for any trailer at all even if it's a manufactured one. Now typically, this is the process to register a homemade trailer. You're gonna weigh the trailer, have a safety inspection performed, write up a detailed description of how the trailer was made, take photos of the construction and provide parts receipts, ensure the trailer if needed, submit the appropriate paperwork to the DMV, and then pay all the associated titling fees. Now, some states may require the parts descriptions to also be notarized, and some states may also allow you to estimate the weight of your homemade trailer based on its components. Check your state's DMV website for the facts specific to your state. <sighs> Whew, that is some list, huh? Now we've heard of people sailing right through the inspections and others taking months to get through everything. If you're worried about the process, you might consider having the experts at Dirt Legal coordinate the title and registration process for you. Contact us at the link in the description below or at our 1-800 number, and we'll give you a no obligation chat to make sure our services are exactly what you need for your home built creation. Remember that we're here to help you get your paperwork squared away in your homemade kit car or your trailer so that you can get yourself out on the road in something you're very proud that you built yourself. We'll see you next time.